So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let us give a warm PUP welcome to our esteemed keynote speaker, our MVP, Mr. Manuel V. Pangilinan. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dean Bernabe, for that uh, very generous uh, introduction. Dr. Manuel de Guzman, Dr. Leonida Calagi, deans, directors, other univers university officials, mga mag-aaral sa PUP, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Unang-una, maraming salamat sa inyong imbitasyon at ako ay nagagalap na makadalo dito sa inyong campus at makilala kayong lahat. Uh, sabi nga ni uh, President De Guzman, ang PUP ang pinakamalaking pamantasan sa Pinas batay sa bilang ng mag-aaral. Nung nag-aaral ako sa Sambeda, nadadaanan ko sa jeep ang Old Santa Mesa pa uwing Pawing San Juan, where I live. Kaya kilala ko ang lugar na ito, ang stop and shop, at ang simbahan ng Sacred Heart na malapit dito. Pero ang PUP ay madalas nababanggit sa looban ng aming Tolways Group. Kasi yung konekto namin ay dadaanan sa tabi ng yung campus bago tumawid sa Ilog Pasig. Kaya nung natanggap ko ang imbitasyon ninyo through Joseph Lardisabal, curious lang ako at sinabi ko, tanggapin ko na para malaman ko kung sino nga itong PUP at mga mag-aaral sa PUP. Pero medyo surprise lang ako sa pagpasok dito sa campus ninyo kasi may marmol na Ted Pylon <laughs> na sumalubong sa akin at meron pala kayong UFO dito na nag i ng tubig. Well, actually, your campus is quite impressive, sa totoo lang. Ang masasuggest ko lang kay President De Guzman, pwede bang alisin na yung Great Wall of China? Kasi mas maganda kung nakikita ang kagandahan ng inyong lagoon. Sinabi ni Joseph sa akin, ang ATM dito, hindi automated teller machine, kundi automatic tubig machine. Napakamura, piso lang, kasama ang plastic at straw. Ang tanong ko sa inyo, malinis ba yun? Pero siguro dapat mag-supply ng tubig, sabi ko kay President De Guzman, ang aming Maynilad Water. Hindi lang libre yun. <laughs> Nalaman ko rin na mas matandang PUP sa UP by four years to be precise. Kaya totoo pala, kayo ang tunay na PUPs. <laughs> ang purong UP. But what impresses me the most is that the university addresses the economically, economically challenged segment of our society. PUP's mission is to give our students access to quality education, to help them achieve their dreams and improve their lives in the most inexpensive way. Ang mag-aaral dito ay purong eskola ng bayan kasi abot kaya ng mahihirap ang tuition fees ninyo. Ilan sa alumni ninyo ay tanyag si Eddie Villanueva, Ted Filon, si Lava Anjuver, Bayani at Bayani. At huwag natin kalimutan ang mga TV5 talents, sina Papa Jack, Maricel Halili, Nina Taduran, at iba pa. Applause 
Si Sheryl Balusa, PUP graduate ng Industrial Psychology, uh, is with us sa uh, First Pacific Leadership Academy. Sheryl. I accepted your invitation because it is time for business like ourselves to reach out to PUP and try to help. If we're able to engage in a dialogue with you, we can understand you better and you can understand us in the world of business. Lalo na, sabi sa akin ni President De Guzman, medyo pugat kayo ng mga aktivista. <laughs> so kailangan tayo mag-usap kung bakit itataas ang water rates at saka fares ng MRT3. <laughs> Kasi naman, saan kami kukuha ng aming empleyado kung hindi sa mga pamantasan tulad ninyo? Kaya mong kahit ko sa PUP ay huwag kayong mahiyang makip makipagpanayam, makipagkita sa mga negosyante at sa sabihin sa amin kung ano ang kailangan ninyo. And, spe and speaking of getting to know you better, Balita ko, ang pinakapopular na pagkain dito ay fewa. Nakalibot ko tanong kay Joseph, ano ibig sabihin ng fewa? Pero maraming salamat kay Mang Virgin. At saka parang only text, meron kayo only lugaw dito. Kinakain sa almusal, pananghalian, hapunan. Laman siya ng bayan. Pantawid gutom lang ang kwekwek, isaw, adidas at betamax. Pero siguro ganyan talaga ang estudyante blues. Kahit nung nasa sambeda pa ako. Kahit ano, babanatan basta masarap. Siguro nga, mas madumi, mas masarap. <laughs> pero balita ko, wala rin kayong wifi. Baka naman pwede kayong makatulong dyan. Kasi PLDT naman, di ba? Basta smart lang ang gamit nyo. O kaya token text at sun cellular. At TV5, wala nang iba, di ba? Balita ko rin, internet, internet connection dito medyo mahina. Mahirap mag-enroll dito kasi pag hindi tumatakbo ang SIS nyo, manual. Magdamag kayo nakapila from ground floor to sixth floor. Parang MRT3. <laughs> Kayo lang yata ang pamantasan na kung bumaha ay nag-uumpisa sa 6th floor pababa. <laughs> well, can I, can I, ubus na jokes ko. <laughs> so, okay, you know, seriously now, my life is mostly similar to all of you. Ang lolo ko ay nag bilang isang public school teacher sa Pampanga, Talak. But he rose to the ranks to become superintendent of public schools and eventually the secretary of education under President Quirino. My grandmother was also a school teacher in Pampanga and was one of the first to teach English during the American Commonwealth regime. My dad began his career as a messenger at the Philippine National Bank and retired as president of Traders Royal Bank, one of the biggest banks in the 80s. As President Guzman and the, my introducer said, I, I studied in Sambeda Elementary High School, and I had only 25 centavos per day, 10 centavos then to buy a bottle of Coke, 5 centavos for crackers, and 10 centavos to get home. Pag nawala ko yung 10 centavos ko, maglalakad o kaya utang sa kaklase. On late Friday afternoons after my PMT in uh, San Beda, I would have to go to Lagarda, walk all the way there to Quiapo to get the jeepney or a bus ride back home. At marami sa mga kaklas ko noon nakakotse. At iba pa, may driver. Sabi ko sa sarili ko, ang swerte naman nila, balang araw magiging ganun din ako. From San Beda, I went to Ateneo. At tulad sa San Beda, jeep at bus din ang sakay ko. Pagkatapos ng college, inasam ko maging master's in business ad, uh, pero walang pera. Kaya tsaga, nag-apply sa Procter and Gamble Scholarship sa Wharton School. It was national competition and I won. <laughs> I thought my fly was open. 
As you can see, for three generations of my family, life meant coping with challenges despite modest means, relying on God-given talent, hard work, and a passionate determination to succeed. The enduring qualities of my education find expression in the values I continue to cherish and practice to this day. Discipline, a passion for excellence, and the belief that work is indeed God's prayer. That's lesson number one for all of you. Education is critical to your future. As to my own corporate story, let me tell you who we are and what we are. First Pacific began its life in Hong Kong in 1981 as a small finance company. We started with only six people on 50 square meters of space in Hong Kong's central business district. district. Our, our starting capital was less than $1 million then. Now today, we are a nation conglomerate with annual sales of about $20 billion and more than 150,000 employees in various parts of ASEAN. The total value of our companies that are listed in the various stock exchanges is close to $50 billion. Not bad, right? <laughs> and I don't want to get into the Forbes list of billionaires. That, that's, uh, that's, not, uh, that's not me. So oh, let me get to the heart of the question I think that you want to ask. About a decade ago, I was asked to return to Ateneo to deliver the commencement address. I found myself talking about my past, like yourselves, and the young graduates' future, and to reveal to them what the greatest secret of all might be. But this may disappoint you. What I told the Ateneo graduates, which I will repeat to you here at PUP today, is that when it comes to success, there are no secrets, no mystery, no magic, and no shortcuts. Success for all of us, whether you're rich or poor, springs from old-fashioned values, values that are as fundamental as hard work, determination, dedication to excellence, and most of all, the passion to succeed. Being honest and truthful is also would be very good for you. At what kayo maging segurista or conservatibo? At your age, you should be bold, be entrepreneurial, you should take risks. Because you're young, you have time to fail. You can only build your arsenal of successes by trying. You won't succeed if you don't try, unless your parents are rich. Are rich. Your successes, no matter how small, should tell you that you can succeed some more. And your failures should tell you that you can survive and move on. And here are more HR lessons from our perspective. The growth and welfare of our companies can best be sustained by treating our people, our employees, customers, and shareholders justly and well. A company's growth cannot be sustained without its people and their commitment, their talent, and their industry, and on the responsibility attached to that reliance. It's always our aim to create a team of the best people to manage our businesses. After all, quality decisions are made by quality people. We do not treat our, employer, our people as employees to be told what to do or to be ordered around. We treat them as people, as partners, to be given the dignity and recognition appropriate to their place in the organization. And since people are essential to our corporate success, they should be regarded and rewarded as owners of the company. This way, their commitment and loyalty to the company can be enhanced and their initiative stimulated and inspired. So let me close by saying both First Pacific and PUP share the many values that promote the success of the Filipino like yourselves. PUP serves as an example for all of us to emulate men and women, both great and common. I'm happy to be here and happier to learn about your own story. Sa mga kwento sa akin ni Joseph noong weekend and I think three other students, nakaka-relate ako sa inyo. Sa mga working students na naglalakad lang papuntang LUP, sa mga nagtatren para makasave sa pamasahe, sa mga minsan lang kumain sa isang araw, sa mga atleta ninyo na sobra ang tiyaga at tiis, at higit sa lahat, ang halaga ng edukasyon na binibigay ninyo at ng inyong pamantasan. Saludo po ako sa inyong lahat.
At dapat masabi sa mundo ang inyong kasaysayan. Balang araw, kayo rin ang tatayo dito sa aking lugar, magsasalita at magbabahagi, di lang ng tagumpay ninyo, kundi ng aral, at magbibigay pugay sa mga susunod at uusbong na takapagtaguyod ng ating kaularan para sa ating bayan. Maraming salamat ulit sa inyong imbitasyon. Mabuhay kayo lahat sa PUP. Thank you so much, Sir Manny V. Pangilinan. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Manny V. Pangilinan. Thank you, Sir. Sir, may we invite you there, the seats, for our questions and answer portion. And folks, if you have any questions to our dearly keynote speaker, our microphone is there and it's open for your question. And by the way, sir, fewa means foot long and egg wrapped around. Okay? So guys, if you have any questions, just go with our microphone and you will start asking our keynote speaker. Is there anyone who wants to ask questions? Wag nang mahiya, PUP eh. Ibang school eh. Tayo tayo lang dito. Go! Sige ate, nagtataas ka ng kamay. Please come up on stage. I know, I mean, dito sa harapan. And ask some questions. Our keynote speaker. Okay, sir. Tell me, tell us your name. And then your question to Mr. Pangilinan. Ito ang umaga po, Mr. Pangilinan. Ako po si Gerard Siasad. Isang mag-aaral dito sa PUP. Um, uh, ano po, uh, kabilang po ang mga manggagawang ng mga Pilipino sa buong mundo sa may pinakamababang pasahod po or pinakamababang cost of labor. Ngayon, ano po ba yung pwede nating gawin upang hindi masyadong ma-underappreciate ang mga manggagawa? Okay, sir. If you would like to ask Sir Professor Jerome Dumlao to be the moderator of this question and answer portion, He is the well, chairperson you know, of BS Ano pa alam mo ulit? Gerard po. Gerard. Gerard, I was also an OFW in Hong Kong for 22 years, no? And um, uh, you know, mahirap pong buhay ng no, OFW. Ako medyo uh, comfortable naman ang buhay ko sa Hong Kong, hindi naman ako ano. Pero most of our people in Hong Kong were household helpers, no? uh, but over time para bang naging naging ano kailangan yung bagong mic <laughs> over time naging ano naging uh, you, you could see that uh, the the the, uh, the number of Filipinos have grown but also their the skill base naging professionals no they, they were um, accountants in Hong Kong and then uh, bankers both investment bankers and commercial bankers. No? Um, you know, in a way, you cannot... First of all, it's okay, no? uh, It's, it's, ano, eh, para bang ikinahihiya natin ang ating mga tao na, na nagtatrabaho abroad o na, na, nagmamigrate. No? Pero kailangan nila yun, eh. We have about 10 million people, no? Abroad. So, hindi dapat natin ikahihiya yun. If anything, what we should do are two things. One is we should educate our people uh, more, no, so that they, they, when they go abroad for their livelihood and their family, uh, they could uh, get a higher salary, di ba? Hindi lang yung household help. Um, and secondly, pag natapos na sila, is to welcome them back and, in fact, initiate a what they call a reverse migration. Because talagang walang kulang ang trabaho dito sa Pinas eh. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenon that's happening. And, you know, uh, I tell you, the single biggest industry and one of the most successful industries has been the OFWs. This country has been, this economy has been made afloat by, the, by virtue of the remittances. No? There's about $25 billion officially of remittances every year and maybe another $5 billion. Yung mga pabaon, unofficial remittances, no? pag yung tiya mo, o yung asawa mo, o yung anak mo, bibigyan mo siya ng cash para dalhin dito. Hindi recorded yun eh. And then yung ating BPO. 
roughly 15 billion. So together, 45 billion. It is the single largest industry. And ano yun eh? When you think about it, you guys are economists. Yung, yung ano eh, the cost, the cost to produce that 45 billion dollars of revenue to our country is practically zero. Diba? So, parabang ano yun eh, uh, blood transfusion yun eh. It goes straight to the bloodstream of the economy fully as $45 billion, and it raises your purchasing power diba? to the tune of $45 billion kasi wala tayong ginagasta eh. Diba? So, we should actually salute them for the help they're giving not only to you and to your families, but also to the general economy of the Philippines. So, so they deserve the recognition for the work they're doing and for, the, for helping out this economy tremendously. And we should help them by educating them more properly so that, as I said, uh, you know, they, can, they can get better jobs, better pay, etc., etc. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Any, any other questions? Actually, sabi ni sir, he will be answering a lot of questions. And he would want us, you, to come up and ask the questions that you need to ask him. Morning, sir. I'm uh, Jay Dumlao from the PUP Open University. Anyone else? Go ahead. Um, good, good morning, po, sir. Okay. I'm Gina Angelo Gutierrez from HRDM22. Okay. Since ang theme po natin is ASEAN HR, the new era begins. My question is, what can you say about ASEAN integration? Do you think it brings more advantage or more disadvantage no. to the Filipinos? No, I'm telling you now, no. Um, and why, sir? Huh? Why? <laughs> I just gave a speech last Saturday before the Sen Law Association, no? the group of chief justices, justices, lawyers at the Makati Shang. And I, they asked me to speak about uh, ASEAN integration from their perspective, the legal challenges. And then, you know, because Kayo HR, right? One of the tenets of ASEAN integration is labor mobility. Right? The free flow of labor from here to Thailand, Thailand to here, here to Singapore, Singapore to here. Is it happening? No, it's not happening. They will get Filipinos if they need those Filipinos. But the moment there are more and more Filipino doctors and nurses, for example, that practice in Singapore, for example, they will put a quota because you will be a threat to their local doctors and nurses. Diba? I'm not saying ASEAN, the notion of Asian, ASEAN integration is something not to be pursued. I think it should be pursued. But it will simply take time and you will have to overcome a lot of political obstacles. Right? For example, ang asukal na binibili nyo, Benta ng asukal dito, namin, we're the largest sugar producer now in the Philippines. We're selling at about 1,400 pesos per 50-pound bag here. Kung i-import tayo ng asukal, we will pay only 700 to 800 pesos per bag. So logically, to benefit you and mga aktivista natin, sarado ang sugar industry, import na lang tayo sa Thailand. Diba? Mas mura sa inyo. Eh, pero the impact on the sugar industry, you will displace 500,000 workers and a total of 4 million people. Because kung bilangan mo yung pamilya nila, yeah, 4 million people will have no jobs and no livelihood. Hindi kaya ng gobyerno natin. No politician will shut down a major industry here. Kanya, the Philippines will have to impose Sini binabana yung taripa eh, from 18% down to 5%. Iba? Pero the moment we implement fully in the spirit and letter of ASEAN integration, patay ang industriya dito. Patay, sigurado. So what the government will have to do is to impose what they call non-tariff barriers. Quota or a certification as to the quality of the sugar being imported, mga ganun-ganun, di ba? in order to restrict the inflow of, of, of imports. Ganun din ang gagawin ng Indonesia sa atin. Ganun din gagawin ng Thailand sa atin to protect the local industry. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Kanya, when you talk 
frankly about ASEAN HR integration, anong ibig sabihin nyo? Yun ang tanungin nyo sa sarili nyo. Anong ibig sabihin nyo? I'm not saying that uh, Filipino doctors cannot practice in other countries. But quite likely, they will require you to, to pass their, whatever it is, medical board. And quite likely, at the moment, they will probably impose a quota on the number of doctors and nurses that can practice in Singapore. That's where we are today. Again, if I may emphasize, that doesn't mean that we should not push uh, the notion of integration, the many programs that are part of ASEAN integration. Basta isipin nyo lang, sampung states yung sa ASEAN, right? And each of the states are in different degrees of political maturity. And the range of uh, political thought is a wide spectrum, di ba? You have absolute monarchy in Brunei, military dictatorships in Myanmar and Thailand, quasi-military dictatorship in Laos and Cambodia, and self their balance is self-styled democracies here, Singapore, etc. So, iba-iba tayo eh. So, magtatagal ito. Magtatagal. So, I don't think it will happen, not, certainly not in my lifetime, I don't think even in yours, when you could see say integration happen in the model of European integration. And let me tell you this, in, you know, with the recent problems of, of the pigs, Portugal, Ireland, Greece, and Spain, you know, Greece is having problems, no? Diba? Huge issues. And you know, they cannot devalue their currency, which is a useful financial tool in an event like that. How can they devalue the currency? They have no currency because everything's euro. So that financial tool to save their people and their economy is no longer available. Kanya isipin din natin yun. It's not as easy. Kasi yung mga people na yakyak na yakyak, hindi rin naintindihan. The realities that are on the ground, di ba? Sorry, ah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. A lot more questions, please. Go ahead. Good morning, sir. My name is Angeline Robles Blinet. I'm from the Boris Polytechnic College. And I just want to ask, as you had said a while ago, that when it comes to success, there's no magic or there's no secrets. Um, of course, but of course, you have this very unique competitive advantage among all. And I just want to ask if what are those that could make us very inspired and interested or motivated as a human resource student? That's it. That's my question. I didn't, I didn't get the question. What's that again? Um... How do you motivate yourself? Slowly, slowly, slowly. How do you motivate yourself? I'm so sorry, I was really nervous. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Can somebody give her water, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, as you have said a while ago, that when it comes to success, that there is no unique, um, I mean, there's no magic or shortcuts or any secrets. But of course, you have this very unique competitive advantage among all, all the investors or, or all of the executives um, in the industry. And I just want to ask if what are those um, competitive advantages that you could share among us human resource students that could inspire us and could motivate us? That's it. Sir, ano daw ang meron kayo na wala sila? Hello, sir. Ito pang... Tayo may mic na ganito, sila wala. Hindi, nag-umpisa ako tulad ninyo. You know, medyo wala uh, pamilya namin. So, you know, you... you, you uh, I don't know, you, you, you just... Siguro masipag lang ako, matyaga, at saka determined to succeed, you know? So, those are the qualities you, you need in order to, ano. At saka, okay, matakot. You will, uh, you will experience failures in your life, uh, whether business or romantic. And, uh, you know, just, just uh, you have to, you just take it on and, you know, just, just, uh, just move, move on. So, there will be uh, events in your life where you have, that, that you have to be sensitive to, you know, and uh, especially opportunities in your career that you have to, to, to note so that when, you, when that presents itself to you, 
you take the opportunity to make a choice you know, and take advantage of that. You know, I, you know there's, no, there's no algebra to, to, to success. I think, actually, if you could choose your parents, you would choose someone like... Like you. Uh, <laughs> no, no, not me. <laughs> like uh, Bill Gates or whoever. Yeah, I mean, you might as well choose the richest man in the world, no? On planet Earth, Bill Gates, right? But you don't have the ability to choose your parents, right? You don't have the ability to choose your school, choose your religion when you're young, right? It's all Everything is determined uh, on you by your parents. So uh, at the end of the day, individual, it's your individual thing. And you just have developed that kind of character that's in you. I think almost all of these guys man, who started without anything, like the internet people, right? Including Bill Gates. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Several more? Go ahead. Nakainom ko na ba ng tubig, sir? Kinakabahan ka rin? Uh, good afternoon, sir Pangilinan. Uh, ako po si Michael Baila from 2-1-D. Ang tanong ko naman po, sir, is sa dami po ng negosyong hawak niyo po ngayon, how do you handle different kind of employees sa loob ng organization niyo po? Well, totoo yun. I mean, it's, uh, each company tends to be different from each other, and each employee core also tends to be different. No? Um, yung, for example, sa Meralco, since it's a monopoly, medyo ibang mindset dun. They're a little slow, bureaucratic, sensitive ang mga tao dun. Ganun, ibang kultura nun. Sa, uh, sa smart, iba rin kultura. Sa PLT, ibang kultura. Sa TV5, Puro si Raulo doon. <laughs> Di ba, Chot? <laughs> so, you know, you, you just have to treat... It's like... Uh, may asawa ko ba? May anak? Wala pa. <laughs> each, each of your kids will be different. No? So, you have to treat... Uh, you know, clusters of your employees differently. Uh, and and uh, each individual rather differently. Kanya-kanyang ano yan, eh, uh, unique uh, characteristics. But of course, having said that, there should be uh, common qualities and values that define the group as a whole. No? For example, sa amin, uh, honesty is uh, paramount in how we conduct our business. No? Uh, two types of honesty, honesty in your financial dealings. Huwag kayo magnakaw ng pera ng kompanya. No? Wag, wag, wag na wag ang financial misdealings yung mga conflict of interest, mga ganon. Hindi, bawas sa amin yun eh. It applies to me and all the way down to the to the lowest level of employee. Pangalawa is, ito, ito hindi natututunan ng Pilipino eh. What I would call mental honesty. To tell us as it is. Kasi hindi namin malalaman ang estado ng kumpanya kung hindi nyo sasabihin sa amin na ganito ang nangyayari sa baba. Di ba? Kasi tayo, pag uh, kaharap nyo yung boss, or even your parents, tahimik na lang tayo. Kinikim-kim nyo yung kung anong sama na loob nyo, o kaya pag may nakikita kayong hindi tamang gawa, kinikim-kim nyo, hindi nyo sinasabi. Sa, sa amin, hindi ganun eh. We encourage our people to speak up freely and without fear, no? Uh, so that we know. Because your job, if you're my colleague in business, is to watch out for my tail. And my job is to watch out for your tail. If I think you're wrong, and if you think I'm wrong, tell me. Diba? You have to tell me because otherwise, yeah, walang mangyayari sa atin. Uh, the guys on top will think everything is going hunky-dory, diba? Whereas if it, if it isn't, it isn't. So we have to be told. We do not like surprises. So tell us the bad news. Don't tell us good, the good news. Right? So uh, tayo, masyado tayong mahihain, uh, sobrang respect sa authority, Oh, ganun, ganun, no? Sa amin, medyo, we, we try to flatten the organization so that people can communicate, can communicate better and communicate freely. No? Be respectful. I'm not saying you should be rude to your bosses. But if you think he's wrong, you should tell him, look, something's going on and I think you're making the wrong decision. No? But then it's up to him to decide what it is he wants to decide. No? Thank you, sir. That's it. Mental honesty. Several more. Hello. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, Kirk Christopher Sulit of 2 &D. 
Uh, what do you think is the impact of territorial claims of China and other Asi- and other Asian countries over Philippine Sea on the objective of ASEAN integration? No, good question. It's a good question because a number of ASEAN states uh, have either one of two situations with China. One is territorial dispute like the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, Thailand to some degree, even Indonesia. Parts of Indonesia are claimed by China. No? So there is that issue that threatens regional stability from time to time. Um, so to that extent, it affects the posture of the ASEAN states, ASEAN members, uh, responding to China either as a bloc or individually. And for now, there is no integrated voice that talks to China as one. You know why? Because, walang media dito, meron man media dito. <laughs> well, kanya-kanyang banat, di ba? Kanya-kanyang interest. Like Laos and Cambodia are vassal states of China. They, re- they depend a lot on economic and military aid from China. So, you, so they will vote in accordance with China's wishes. Myanmar, to a degree, depends on China for economic aid. Vietnam, Palaban. Diba? Kung natalo nilang U.S. during the Vietnam War, they'll stand up to China. They also have the, the appropriate armed forces to give China a bloody nose. They will not win a war against China, I don't think so. But they certainly can give China a bloody nose if there's, a, if there's an outbreak of hostilities. No? The problem is we, we're actually quite helpless. China is building a huge military base in one of the islands of Spratly. It's called Fierce Reef, I think, or something. And it's out there. The photos are out. The satellite photos are out there in, in public. Uh, Aviation Week and James Defense Weekly have published photos of the construction of a big airstrip and a naval base. And I'm sure there'll be uh, a garrison of soldiers. No? In, in that particular uh, reef. Uh, Indonesia is too far from China, so they can stand up to China, and they also have a very strong armed forces. Singapore is a little more neutral. No? So, um, the, the reality is uh, we and the ASEAN have got to deal with China because China is a regional, a global uh, military and economic power. So you cannot ignore China. You cannot simply just bring them to court without dealing with the commercial realities because we trade a lot, they have lots of money, they have lots of business. So it's a very tricky balance that a country like the Philippines or any one of the member states of ASEAN must do to protect your sovereignty but at the same time be able to trade and invest together with China. Because I'm sure you experience it here in this, in this, in your relationships, diba? You, you, there might be a bully in the neighborhood. You got to deal with this guy. You got to deal with this guy. And yet he could be a source of livelihood for your people, no? and you cannot ignore him. You really cannot. Will China give up its claim on the South China Seas? I don't think so. We put we put a case to the uh, UNCLOS, to the United Nations uh, Commission Laws of the Seas. They will ignore. They will ignore that. They will ignore. If the decision is favorable to the Philippines, will China implement? I don't think so. Because the simple fact is that China cannot be brought to a world court, an international court. You know why? Because the moment they submit themselves to the jurisdiction of a world court, every banana republic on planet Earth will bring them to the world court for the simplest claim. Right? Kasi alam ng buong mundo, mayaman sila. It's like human life, di ba? Ganun din yun eh. Kanya, they will never say, yeah, I will submit myself to jurisdiction of an international body and follow the decision of the international body because everybody else will bring them to court. No? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. Hello, sir. Chat. Two more questions. Good morning po. Mr. Alice Cubido po, from College of Human Kinetics. Uh, actually, pumunta lang po ako dito. 
And then yung uh, I mean invited po ako dito. Ah uh, tanong ko lang po sir ano. Ah uh, bilang chairman po ng maraming kumpanya, ah uh, inaaso inaabsorb niyo po ba sa kumpanya ninyo yung kung malalaman niyo na aktivista ang isang nag-aapply? And then I have follow up question po. Ah uh, pag ano Sige, go. And then, uh, follow-up question ko po is yung, in your own perspective po, uh, okay po ba sa inyo yung pagtatatag ng union sa uh, loob po ng kumpanya na inyo nasasakupan? Yan po, yun lang po, sir. <laughs> ano, text question ba yan? I know, sir. Uh, sa... Teka muna, tanongin kita, nakasmart ka ba? Yes, sir. Well, The, the, the simple answer is, no, we will not discriminate, discriminate against anyone. Whatever it is, whether activista ka, whatever. Alam mo, marami activista sa amin, sa kumpanya namin, di ba? Ayang isa, nakaupo dito. Si Isberto, si Doivea, sino pa ba? Marami. Of course, as they age, they've mellowed. No? Pero no, we, we respect political beliefs. Just don't be disruptive of the business of the people inside the organization. You're entitled to your political belief. You're entitled to your religious beliefs. Uh, we, we, we respect that. We're not, we're not, we're not uh, people who will practice discrimination uh, against others. Kung may pinsala, at matay may pinsala, di ba? Okay lang, okay lang sa amin. So, ang ano lang is, uh, you know, you, you, sa mga aktivista, you know, when they protest against the MRT fare hike or a tollways increase or a Meralco increase, you have to understand what's happening, di ba? You have to understand why that's being done. Uh, yun lang, because at the end of the day, uh, ito, let me tell you this. It applies to PUP as well and to business. We in our group believe that the ultimate test of our effectiveness as an institution, as a business, and you as an academic institution, is how well you have improved the lives of our people. That's the ultimate test. We have many poor people in our midst, di ba? So, you know, at the end of the day, it's not only profits for us, but we ask ourselves, have we improved the lives of our people? Have we improved the communication requirements of our people at affordable prices? If we have, then we've done our job. Have we improved the water service? Have we improved the power supply, etc., etc.? If we could answer yes to ourselves, then we're doing our job. It's an academic institution. It's not so much the number of students you have or whatever. At the end of the day, it's the quality of the PUP graduates improving year on year on year so that you can get better jobs whether here or abroad. What was your second question? patungkol po sa union. Uh, especially po, yung mga, sa company po, di ba, okay lang po ba sa inyo na makapagtatag ng union yung mga manggagawa po ninyo? Well, it's something that, the answer is uh, okay lang, no? okay sa amin. It's not, we somewhat neutral to a little, what's the Facebook term? Unlike? <laughs> to a little unlike. But, if, Most of the companies we have uh, have unions, so so we just deal with that. And one thing that we we uh, well, maybe I shouldn't go in there. Uh, yeah, we deal with unions. But one one thing that's when I first came to PLDT, ano sila tatlong union dun eh, cakam medyo militante. So sa may practice ang old management. We said we, we're not we're not gonna do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to face up to the unions, explain to them why we're doing certain things. Because the company needs to do these certain things. If not, we will not survive. If the company does not survive, neither do you survive. So it's your choice. If you want to strike, up to you. Right? But this is the state of the company. Right? You have to cooperate for your sake, for our sake, for the company's sake. Right? Right? So we, it's important for us to, to, to repeat my earlier theme of being able to communicate amongst ourselves that this is where we are and this is where we're going. Kasi kung tatago mo, hindi nila malalaman. Akala nila, 
you know, sobrang pera gina, you know, ginagawa mo, ganyan, ganyan. Thank you, sir. All right. So, one last question. Sir, good afternoon po. Roger Mel Perez po from Pamantasan, Lusod na Maynila. Ano po kasi, from observation po, ano po, in, ano, compared po sa other countries, mas mahal po ang internet connection dito po sa Pilipinas po. Kasi ano po ba, is there a way po ba na maging affordable po yung internet connection sa Pilipinas para sa lahat po ng households? Para may way po kami ng pag, ano, ng information, para may power din po kami. Ah, uh, meron. Bagsak nga ang profits namin, bababa niyo pa ang presyo. <laughs> yeah, when we looking for ways always to make our prices affordable, no? Because, hindi lang naman yung mga postpaid na mayayaman ng aming kliyente, di ba? Mga 2-3 million lang yun, eh. Yung talagang yung prepaid, ang, you know, the forms, uh, the, the biggest block of our consumers, especially for smart, no? Ang globe medyo social, they tend to be more postpaid than prepaid. So, for us to address the economically challenged segments of our society, we do have to bring down our prices both on the device side and on the connection side, the access side, to make it afford affordable to more and more of you. No? But typically, telecoms will start at the upper layer, those who can afford the device, the cell phone or the laptops, and the uh, access charges. But uh, as you get... Pag na, namina mo niyan, bababa ka. As, but as you get lower into the uh, lower economic strata of society, the prices have got to come down. So, yes. Uh, uh, the answer is yes, we have to. We have to do that. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for answering all the questions. I'd like to call on our uh, MC here. Thank you so much, Sir Dumlao, and of course, MVP. Palakpangan natin sila, guys. Thank you so much. And of course, in this moment, we would like to award a block of appreciation to give our, and to give our simple token to our dear keynote speaker, Mr. Manuel V. Pangilinan. May we request our beloved President, Dr. Emmanuel C. De Guzman, the Dean of the College of Business Administration, Dr. Leopoldo Francisco Bragas, the Chairperson of the Department of Management, Dr. Marilu Mondana, and the Convention Advisor, Professor Joseph Lardizabal. And as we read the citation, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, College of Business Administration, and HRSE Organizing Committee 2015 award this block of appreciation to Mr. Manuel V. Pangilinan in grateful appreciation and acknowledgement for sharing his expertise as keynote speaker in the 5th Annual HR Students Convention 2015 International with the theme, ASEAN HR, The New Era Begins. Leadership excellence through an effective HR empowerment. Given this 4th day of March 2015 at the Buluagam Balagtas NALLRC PUP PU, PU Main Campus Santa Mesa, Manila. Signed by Paul Technic University of the Philippines, President Dr. Emmanuel C. de Guzman. Another big round of applause to our keynote speaker, the one and the only MVP, Mr. Manuel V. Pangilinan.